Toss, and we have Coontail. We go to each one of those waypoints and we record all the species and the relative abundance found. That includes both native and invasive species. There's a lot of environmental uh, factors that can affect growth every year, so this map this year may differ a lot from last year. That's why we're redoing it to make sure that, that we get um, you know, an accurate result of what's out there right now. This is a little less dense than the last toss, but certainly tells us that we've got a lot down there growing. Our toolbox in this field is very small. Um, we have the ability to use contact herbicides, systemic herbicides, harvesting, um, but those are, are really the main treatments. Now, there is also a systemic herbicide called fluoridone or sonar, and sonar is used for a whole lake treatment. But the thing you have to take into account with that is that it also can have impacts on other species. So we really don't recommend that a whole lake be treated. Um, you're also killing off all the biomass at, at one time, which could cause massive algal blooms. If we kill off too much milfoil and then take away too much coontail at the harvesting, the blue-green algae are going to thrive. And, and that is going to yield a lake that is not um, able to be used recreationally, especially for contact. We need to be very careful and deliberate. That is one of the reasons why we're we're taking our time to get a very sound data set for the decision making. With the amount of algae that's in the water column, and obviously last year we, we determined that most of those samples had predominant blue-green algae in them, um, it's extremely easy to get the lake to convert to mostly algae, and we have to be very careful um, not to have that happen. Ideally, we would want treatments to be broken up over time rather than all at once, because if there is an all at once release of the nutrients, every time you kill a plant, you're releasing all of that nutrient of the plant into the water column, so that too feeds the algae. So we have to be very strategic about what gets treated and when at what time and how far apart the treatments are. After developing a lake management plan, implementation can take many years. Um, we, we expect to see a lot of progress this year, especially because we'll have um, an idea of where everything is at and, and what to treat it with. And that will help accelerate things from the vegetation end. But there's a lot of other components. There's the water column component. There's a watershed component. Um, there's the uh, la you know, lakefront user component. So there's a lot of other components that need to be implemented in the management plan that are just going to take time. So I, I do urge everybody to be patient. Um, it will happen. The lake will be a lot better in, in five more years, um, but it is going to take you know, steps to get to that point.